So there we go, part two of how I paint models. As before, I've cleaned the model down with a bit of alcohol, uh, just to make sure there's no oily fingerprints, and we are ready to go. Uh, again, we're using Vallejo Model Air, RLL, R, RLM 74 and 75, so you've got grey, violet, and grey, green. Uh, we'll be starting off with RLM 75. Uh, we'll be using my Hansa 281 uh, from Hydra and Steenbeck. And what I've done just to start with is I have put a bit of thinners in just to wet the needle, spray it through, make sure there's no gunk in the colour cup. So we're going to take a fair bit of paint because there's quite a bit of area to cover. Okay, so there's the paint in the colour cup. And we're going to just test the flow. There we go. That's looking nice. So let's let's have a look. Now we're going to orientate. We've got the painting chart. So we're going to just put that in the background. You won't be able to see it on, on the camera, but it's in the background. And I'll be holding the model roughly as, as the paint chart is aligned so we get the areas. And I'm just going to put it in freehand. Um, and we're going to demarcate the area we need to paint first. So, and it doesn't matter if it's not 100% accurate because the next colour we put down will we'll be able to blend any areas that we're not just quite happy with. Uh, so the beauty of this technique here. Immediately, you can see how how high the contrast is. There we go. Okay, and then we'll go from this wing here. And the beauty with this model and this paint scheme is a lot of these uh, demarcation lines follow panel lines. So we can use them to help us position the, the paint and get it as accurate as possible. As I said, it doesn't matter if it's not 100% accurate because we'll, we'll neaten it up when we go in with the second camouflage colour. Okay, so there we go. Now it looks like a bunch of lines, but we, what we're going to do now is we're going to do what we did before. I'm just going to take the crown cap off so I can clean the tip. I don't know if you can see this. This is the one foot drawback of acrylic paints. I mentioned this in the last video, but I don't know if you actually saw it. You can see the tip there. It's got quite a bit of just dried up paint on it. So what I might actually do is put a drop of thinners in. And when I say a drop, just a drop. Um, there we go, a little drop. And in this thinners, I have Tamiya's retarder, acrylic retarder. Give it a little bit of blowback just to bubble it up. So that will hopefully make the plate flow a little bit easier and avoid tip dry. Right, so let's get on and do the pre shading like we did before. reasonably steady hand but again it doesn't matter if it's not just 100% accurate because that's what gives for the model finish Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And around these engines there's quite a bit of detail in here. And it might be a little difficult at the moment to pick up individual panel lines. So you can focus on the bigger panels. And then we'll, we'll pick out the other ones when you get your oil wash in. Tip a little bit, you can see it's the flow is stopping, so we're just getting there, clean the tip off, and away we go painting again. Now, the thing to remember here is just to angle the aircraft and the airbrush so we make sure we get all of the edges and we blend that paint in with the underside paint. And then what we can do is we'll just start a little bit on the control surfaces where the ribs are. Okay, give us a little bit of a defined line. And move in a bit closer just to get a harder demarcation line for the camouflage edge. And then we'll just pull back and then we'll start the blend. There we go. Lay down the colour. We just want Pin of colour. There we go. But we want to retain. We want to retain the the faded centres. So let's just go for this panel. So really light pull on the trigger. So it's just very fine mist of paint going down. And when you've got it filled, stop and move away. And as it dries down, then you should see the pre-shading darken back in again. Same here then. There we go. And of course, remember from last time then, this is just the base layer. So we'll be coming back in here and we'll be lightening these panels. Make sure we get that back edge painted. There we go. Lovely. Splendid. If we think that one there's a little light, we'll get that back edge anyway. If we think that's a little light, we can just lay on a tiny bit more color. Doesn't take much. This is the beauty of this technique. Very thin paint, very little paint, but lots of color lots of variation straight away you see that in the light right let's crack on and get this wing done here now bearing in mind on the side we've already painted the rlm 76 so we need to be careful how we're spraying we don't want to spray down on the wing like that because any overspray is going to hit the side and although it's going to get mottling we want to try and keep it rlm 76 for as long as we can so there's more of a contrast between the mottling colors and the undercoat of the rlm 76 so we'll go in here and we'll just tilt the model away from you and away from the airstream and then that should stop most of the overspray affecting the paint that's already down. So get in there and we'll start picking out these little individual panels here. Dry again, so let's get the kitchen towel, clean it off, a rub, blow through. There we go, and off we go again.
And because we're only putting small thin layers of paint down, what we can do if we want to get a little bit more accuracy, sharpen up the paint line as we move in a little bit closer. Um, and that way it will reduce the fading um, from the spray pattern spreading out. There we go, we've got a bit of a run. Not to worry when it's the first coat's on, what we can do is just rub it out with our finger. Leaves a little stain, but you won't actually see that on the top layer of paint, and then we come back in. There we go. Right, so. Let's just do as we did before, tilt the model down so we get the leading edge of the wing. Very fine trigger pull. There we go. And then there again, we'll do the back edge, the uh, sailing edge. Very fine, thin layer of paint going there. Very thin. Keeping that pre shading quite vibrant. Of course, because we're using very thin layers of paint. There we go. Because we use some very thin layers of paint, then it will dry quicker too. Now, where there's a big join for the likes of a flap or a, a control surface like the aileron, then we can go a little bit heavier on the paint because that's naturally going to be darker anyway. Dead easy to fill in, dead quick. And get that overall shading in. Remembering to get the uh, leading edge of the wing, uh, trailing edge and leading edge. So. <laughs> and the leading edge. that line a bit more and then there we go let's paint that in that'll do right so that is the wings um, we have the fuse and large panels so we've got a piece across the nose Roughly runs about here. And this is where we're going to be quite brazen and confident because we're going to do this freehand. So this is where we need to make sure everything's working really well. We're running at about one bar, about 15 to 20 psi. Let's hold the model still, rest in one wingtip on the bench, and then we'll come in here. That's a little bit of a wavy line. Excellent. And it comes right down the front here. Same again, just tilt it around so we can paint this side. It's a slightly longer line, and we'll just hold that out of the way. Okay. And again, it's not so easy when you when you've got the pressure line running. Clear that. There we go.
That'll do for the edge. We've got a pan line across there. Yeah. And one there. And then we just want to, again, just lightly fill it in. Very, very thin coats of paint. Just gently colour it in. It doesn't matter if you think you've gone a little heavy because we can lighten that up like we did on the underside. Excellent. Okay. Right, so the next line is down the rear of the fuselage. So where are we? Here, and then on, if you look on the painting instructions, you can see clearly see the panel lines on the instructions. So we just count the panel lines on the instructions, and then count the corresponding panel lines on the model. So what have we got one, two, three. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, we know it's there, and it's a slight diagonal over. Again, we just off any tip right and layer lining. Happy with that, brilliant. And that goes right the way up to the tail. Okay, so we're happy with that. We need then to look at the side profile. Again, it's a wavy line, and we've already got the paint um, halfway up the side of the fuselage. You can see that. So we just need to lay in that wavy line, and again, just make sure the tip's clean, and then just go for it. clean the tip off because it really is burned up now. The paint's not want to flow which makes things a little bit more difficult. Alright, let's Okay. So let's go for it again shall we? There we go. It doesn't matter just usually if it's not a perfect demarcation purely because you've got mottling to go in here as well. It's, it's actually struggling to put this paint out. can do is we can come back in with our LM76 and just gently tidy it up. We want to try and keep the lines reasonably even, height-wise along the side of the airframe. Done for the pre shading, swap around and meet them in the middle. And then gently lay in the shading color so we're happy with the level of opacity, how much of a see through the paint is, so how, how much you pre shade is still showing through. Very, very small pulls on the trigger, minimum airflow of paint. Yeah. Happy days. Right, finally we've got the tail section. And that's quite simple. Let's just check the instructions. 
Right, so we've got a, a line that comes in here. Sometimes it's easy to flood, but it doesn't matter, we can work with that. We've got a line that comes across here. There we go, and then we've got a section in here. Right, this. And again, make sure we're getting all the trailing edges and leading edges where appropriate. Excellent. Right. There is our first layer. Now we've still got some paint in the colour cup, which is fine. I'm going to chuck in a little bit of thinness to try and get it flowing a tiny bit better. And we're going to need to pick a highlight colour. We don't need white in this instance because it's quite a darker paint and white would be too stark. So we're going to look for a grey uh, to line it up. And I think we've got a choice between RLM 76 or RLM 84. Um, so we're probably going to go for RLM 84. Let's just get them out of the packet and see. Yeah, 84 is uh, grey blue. We don't need just too much. Again, it's a dark colour, so any lightning we're going to do is going to be quite apparent quite quickly. So probably going to be half a dozen drops of paint into what we had, which was roughly a third of the colour cup. So about a mill of paint maybe. A little bit of backflowing. And I think you can see straight away that the, the colour shade's brightening up. And blow through. Right, let's have a look and see. We'll try to Try paint some of these panels and, and see just where we get. So I want to be at steady, so the one, one way you can do is just hold the airbrush. Put something underneath the wing so it doesn't flop around. There we go, and then that'll help you with your shading. There we go. Okay, so same as before, we're just going to do a general shade this time. Okay, so a little bit of flicking, stabbing movements, bouncing movements, whatever you want to call it, just to get that variety in, in the paint stroke so we're not keeping it all uniform. There we go. I'm going to try painting the edges and flicking back. Just trying to get that weather-worn look. That's already gone down through a few shades of paint. 
a few layers of paint. Just trying to get it so it all becomes a more tonal finish. Bearing in mind this is just the base layer for later weathering with oils or enamel washes or filters or whatever your preference is. And with this centre spine, a bit like the lower spine, we just need to flick over the centre of the top. And that'll give us the shading we're looking for. And here we just need that. Let's do the front of the panel and flick it back. There we go. go okay and what we can do is just take a little shade lighter so another couple of drops not too much because we don't want to just shift the color too far away from the original color what I've got here as well as a brush which will help to blend and mix in the color cup just blow through the we go I also need to wipe off the tip and then go back in as well. Start from the side you started with before. Oh, there. And this time I'm just picking out the front of the panel and leading it down the panel. That's where I want the highlight to be. Just in the front. Yeah. it is quite a strong colour compared to the original base colour. That's all we want really. So, same on here, down the edge there, front of the panel. Just to try and give a little bit more 3D effect. Take the paint around any hatches to make them stand out a bit better. And then just to blend it all together, just as we did before, just give it a gentle dust over. Right, and we need to do this front and nose piece because obviously I haven't done that. So we're just going to go straight in with a highlight, a real highlight colour. There we go, that's all we need. Catch a bit on that side, front of the panels, right on the nose. Brilliant. Okay, I think we're happy with that. 
Right. Let's change colors.